Hi everyone, my name is Ibrahim Dineja and today we are going to make a presentation on the topic solar vineyards and our goal would be to understand the business model of the uh, business model of solar vineyards and to understand the financials of the company and to understand if there are any concerns regarding uh, the business. This is just an overview of uh, what, uh, what contents we are going to discuss in this presentation. Uh, let's start with the company's overview. So, Sula Vineyards was uh, founded in 1999, was uh, by Rajiv Saman. And uh, as we can see here, it's it's an Indian wine industry. Uh, it's a it's a company of Indian wine industry, and their main business is of the wine only. But they uh, they have a side business of wine uh, tourism also. We uh, here we can look at the bifurcation between their uh, wine wine business. As we can see that their business is bifurcated between two. They have 84% revenue from their uh, in-house uh, production of the wines only, and 8% of the revenue comes from their imports uh, of the of the uh, wine, and the eight and the, and the last 8% comes from the wine tourism uh, of the company. So, uh, the positive point here is that the company has a, a big market presence. As we can see here is that they are almost all over the India with a uh, strong presence in 25 states and 6 union territories along with it they have they do have the uh, international presence too with over 20 countries globally and uh, they have a notable market share of 52 percent as you can see here they are primary competitors who are uh, bigger in the form of market capitalization are uh, united spirits and radico etc and but uh, here's a catch because uh, Sula is pioneer of the grape uh, wine, which gives them the early mover advantage, or I would say the first mover advantage. That's why this firm is uh, ever growing, and we can see it in the financials here. Uh, yeah. So, like this, I said that they have a strong market presence, and that is complemented uh, by the 13,000 retail touch points and multiple distributors they have all around the world, and uh, mainly in India too. So here are the financials of the company. I won't go into detail. You can uh, look at yourself. But the main point uh, to see here is that they have uh, net profits and net profit margins increasing uh, each year from 2018. I have the reports from. And the main thing here to see is that during the COVID period, when everything was on hold, they managed to risk their. Uh, they managed to uh, mitigate their uh, losses and. After that, they did a great comeback, and as we can see here, they had a, a growth of 11 to 16 percent after uh, these years, and currently they are also showing the same uh, positive growth of the company. Here are some of the forecasting of the companies regarding the sales, EBITDA, and EPS, etc. I won't go into the details. You can look at uh, look at uh, that here only. So let's talk about the operation strategies now. So uh, it's a bit concerning point here because they are not aggressively uh, into this uh, innovation point right now. Uh, their main goal is right now to to you know uh, leverage their uh, digital media and uh, by they just want to uh, improve their production capacity and they want to uh, especially penetrate the Indian market. But their main point here is that they want to premiumize their uh, products. And yeah, that's all. So they are not uh, aggressively into the uh, innovations uh, point as their uh, competitors are doing. So it's a bit concerning point. So we are going to talk about the R&D and their innovation strategies, but that is not public yet. So we can't comment on that thing. But here's a point which I need to discuss is that the company is trying to uh, do eco-friendly technologies and they are trying to go eco-friendly in their business model. So, which I think uh, it personally is a good point because in today's world that is uh, ultimately very important. And being an investor, that that is a, that is ethical to us also. So, if if I want to apply in a firm which is doing uh, eco-friendly well, so yeah, that's a plus point for me. But yeah, still we don't have the uh, exact R and D information of them yet. Yeah, these are the points of the CSR and sustainability, which uh, I'm not going to discuss here. You can look at into here only. Yeah, so this is the main point. Now, uh, as we know that this is a farming uh, type of business because they have to, you know, grape, uh, grow grapes and then uh, their business uh, runs. So here are some of some of the big risks uh, present are such as the climatic conditions as this business is a seasonable business 
and also we have strict government regulations and licensing system uh, here in india and so these are the, but again these risks are not only uh, to the solar wind and only their competitors are also facing same risk and the good thing here is that solar is trying to mitigate these risks with their uh, strategies uh, so if they if they manage to you know mitigate this risk and uh, to somehow t- try to mitigate this risk then this risk will uh, definitely convert into the opportunities so yeah that's a good point here that they are trying to mitigate this risk as these are uh, very concerning risks for this industry now here is uh, here's a point that they are also in the philanthropy uh, side because in the covid also they uh, contributed a lot to the society by uh, by their uh, crores of donations yeah that's all from my side thank you for connecting here yeah thank you so much